this version here. Um, so this, uh, we're back on the 26 lands because I did try out a version of 25 lands uh, where we cut one center glade. So I'm back on three center glades and four stomping grounds. Um, then we've got four wooded foothills, one green fetch, and then two red fetches. Um, in the version I played in the tournament, I was on, uh, uh, I believe I was on like two arids and then a windswept or something. But uh, yeah, those those you can bounce around a little bit. Uh, three packs, three bolts, one sweltering. I did see a list recently ran the two angers in the main, which I think has a lot of merit. So I might be trying that out. Um, and then it's four far seeks, four searches, two prismatics, four securos, one wood elf. Um, if only got one scape shift, uh, four breaches, two uh, uh, two hours. Uh, the four primevals and then the woodfall primus now in the side i am just a big fan of chalice right now i increased it by one went to the three instead of the two i cut damping sphere which i'm not sure it was a correct call here it is good against um obviously tron and amulet here so might be worth the bringing it back in but this way i was able to get the extra crossing grip and still keep in the carnage tyrant so we'll test out this version see if it's worthwhile Yeah, I've uh, I've only had a positive experience there, and everyone else that I've talked to outside of their group has always had a positive experience as well. So we'll see. I think time will tell. I think um, I mean the strong reputation that they've done so far with absolutely no marketing. Everything that they have done is through organic traffic, which is very impressive for a new restaurant opening up, um, especially in the downtown market. Okay, well, this hand is literally just land go. Um, so it's kind of awkward. Uh, we're on the draw, too. Hmm. I think we're going to try it. I'm not a big fan of it. Um, if we get one ramp spell, though, then we're in a pretty good spot. Looks like we're against a dredge. That's a primeval titan, which is not bad. We're, let's run out the center glade. We'll pass it over. If we can hit a ramp spell this next turn, that would be pretty sweet, and we should be able to win the game if we do. I'm pretty confident that they they don't have any mill effects going on right now. No dredgers in the graveyard yet. Oh, let's edit the stream here so people don't come in and expect me to play. Mono Green Tron, and then, oh my gosh, a uh, breach. Oh, there's their Dredger, Mark Amoeba. And three Amalgams, oh my goodness. It's not good for us, folks. Alright, we didn't hit a ramp spot, which is not good. We're gonna have a bolt on amalgam. Take seven. And if we still hit a ramp spell, we're not in the worst spot. If we don't though, not good. If we don't, I think we just lose. Yeah, this is definitely one of the reasons why we would want to run Anger in the main. So I might be swapping that out as well. Still didn't hit the ramp spell, so that means it is over. All right, we want to bring in the surgicals here and the angers. Bailoff is pretty solid, and a braids we can choose to bring in. I'm not sure if it's good enough. Don't need the Woodfall Primus here. I am 
fine with cutting those. I'm fine with cutting the Hours of Promise. No, I think we want to keep the Hours of Promise here. So through the breach, because we're cutting out some of these threats, we're going to cut that. I think I'm fine with swapping out a Sweltering Sun for the Anger as well. And then we're going to take out a Wood Elf. So we're just going to bring these in and take those out. Uh, this hand has absolutely no green source, but it's got a double anger. So we're gonna keep this and try it out. Let's see if the let's see if the double anger hand is good enough to just win the game. Oh, Barry Live is sick. Do I have an amalgam and a stinkweed in the grave? Yeah, I used to use that card in a lot of my janky decks, so it is sweet. here it's gonna be pretty sweet for us because it's gonna hit those two and three amalgams So we're just going to play the mountain here and we'll anger. I think we're gonna shock ourselves, play Prismatic, and then cast Farseek. Yeah. Speaking of Crater Huff, uh, I am pretty excited for that double green spell. The double green X spell that we're gonna be getting. Pass it over. It comes back to our turn, we win the game. So. Yeah, all those all those spells actually are pretty sweet. I'm excited for what they did with uh, that cycle. Uh, the 10 mana bits, kind of crazy, but honestly, decks like uh, a Devoted Combo is going to be able to take advantage of it. And Elves are going to be able to take advantage of it if that's what they're looking for. I think they have Green Sun, though, which is just better because their deck is already tuned for that. As opposed to finding any creature, but it does find stuff in the graveyard too, doesn't it? Yeah, I, mean, uh, I was meaning elves in uh, Legacy, but I think they're just better off with Green Sun. Regular elves in 
Modern, I imagine, will play this card. It's a pretty sweet card, and it can find up their threat. And they don't mind that extra mana that's going to cost anyway. Alright, so we're at one, and our opponent's dead. So we'll Bella cut and shoot them. And then we'll through the breach, drop a prime time in, go get ourselves some lands. Oh, why don't we grab these uh these Bella cuts? Shoot you for uh for like infinite damage opponent. <laughs> I think we're going to take out a bolt and bring in the sweltering. I'm thinking about it, and I'd rather just have the sweeper. There's Legacy Elves bugs. I don't know enough about Legacy to answer that question with... 100% certainty. So, let's pull up a list. How far do I have to go down to find an elf's list? There it is. Uh, this hand's a little slow, but I think it's good to keep. We're not ramping or anything, uh, but we've got Surgical and Sweltering Suns. Um, and we've got a relevant threat later on. It looks like, for the most part, they're green and they might splash uh, white or black depending on what they want for their sideboard cards, but for the most part, they are just. Uh, <clears throat> Go valid cut here, we'll pass it over. There might be a version that plays that. I didn't think they did play that though. But once again, I don't know enough about uh, Legacy to speak earnestly on it and well enough on it. Oh, crap. So we could have hit the stink weed in there, that was a mistake. Okay, if we prevent the Narco Amiibo, it doesn't really do anything. Um, it was definitely a mistake, but I think we still want to hit the stink weed in now. They've got Ancient Grudge, two Blood Gas, Dark Blast, and a Life of the Lone in their hand. ourselves and then we far seek here and go grab a mountain we'll pass it over Yeah, Dark Blast is kind of interesting that they kept it in. 
Um, it might just be because they want to be hitting our Sakuras, though, so they can swing through. So it's not completely unreasonable, obviously. And then sometimes you just want to kill your own um, blood gas. So then prevents them from getting exiled. And that way you can still get the coming back and getting the triggers that way. So are they bring in the ancient guys because they expect me to have relic in play, or in the in my deck. It's funny because we're not playing them. <laughs> tap land here um, specifically a forest probably we'd be pretty sweet to drop the bail off but not the end of the world I am more than happy to just play the Sakura and oh okay this is cool so we'll go Sakura here we'll sack it get a mountain put the Cineglade into play untapped and then play the other Sakura And now we're set up to drop a prime time next turn, which should be pretty bad for our opponent. Judge their loan. If we draw a breach, we just win the game. Otherwise, we'll win in two turns. This does not seem bad in the main. We uh, we pretty much almost never cycle anyway. Painting this mini, mini what? So we're just gonna pack here. Go grab ourselves a prime time. Kind 
cast it. Yes. And we'll grab a... I'm trying to think if they still run Blood Moon. If we didn't see it, we could have looked at their deck, but... I didn't, so... Uh, um, it's too late now. We'll grab a Valakata Mountain. Shoot their Narco Amoeba. Shoot them. Play the land. Pass the turn. Oh, sweet. Yeah, I had a lot of fun painting the couple that I've done. I did a half uh, orc monk that I got to paint at my friend's place because they have all the paint. I don't actually have any of it. Uh, but they had the full setup, and that was a lot of fun being able to just totally design the character the way I wanted. Can they only come flag us for 10 and they're mad at themselves? Because they can't swing for the one because we shot the Narco Miva? Because that, folks, would be hilarious. They should still be able to win it, even if that's the case, right? They can flag us for... Um, all but one land, play the land, get all their blood gas back, swing at us, and we die. Block one and got a negative two. Oh, that's sweet. Just looked up what that looks like, and that looks pretty awesome. I haven't played D and D. I've been more of a Pathfinder. Uh, we'll keep this. This is sweet. Awesome! I'm excited to see it. Think we'll preserve a little bit of life. I've been so much more aggressive with this deck than I really should be, but um, it's awkward if you don't get all the necessary lands either. But it'll be fine by the time we get now. Because like, if we go shock next turn, we can go Sakura, land, land, play the land. Uh, our promise gives us two Valakuts. Yeah, no, we're gonna shock ourselves. Let's, let's live life on the edge. Because if we didn't get that, we got a forest, then we play the mountain, Sakura, go get forest, I mean, uh, mountain, mountain, and then play the Citerglade, we'd be able to only fetch up the two Valakut, but then we have four mountains and one forest to play. So then it would take us two land drops in order to get the Desperate and Simeon. So we're probably going against Crystal Brand.
we'll get our mountain. Play a cinder glade, and we will fetch up two valicuts. Hmm. I guess we could go a valicut and a mountain, shoot them for three. That way, if they shoot, if they gain the life, it might stop from just getting one. And I don't think it slows down our clock at all. So. Alright, we'll see if that's enough to slow them down. for a bunch. And then we'll far seek. Oh, they're not dead. How great of them. Yeah, you're not wrong about being, being a big math problem, because it was based off of what? Uh, D&D 3.5, which was just a giant math puzzle anyway. Um, but it, the, the one thing I do like about Pathfinder a ton is it really lets you do a lot of things that I don't feel like you get to do as much with the new D&Ds. Like, they streamline a bunch of stuff, which is really nice. Right, they get one draw of seven. Is it enough? Yeah, I think the big thing with Pathfinder is having a, uh, a group of friends or a GM that can like kind of hold your hand through it because it is pretty brutal. All right, we want the surgicals here. Don't really care about any of this other stuff. I honestly think we're just going to be bringing in the... Um, the chalices as well. We don't need the sweltering suns or the wood elves or woodfall primus. I'm good with cutting all of that. And then I think we're gonna cut the bolts. I think we're gonna cut out all the bolts because we're gonna bring it in. No, we're gonna do just that. And then we're good. Seems a little awkward, but I think we're gonna keep it. Really hoping to draw an untapped land here. Okay, so we're gonna shock ourselves and suspend the search. Chalice for two. If we get land, nope, no land. I 
Yeah, I think we messed up a good bit when we played it um, for quite a while until we got a good feel for it. And even then, like, there's there's tons of times where we're just like, uh, I don't actually know the ruling for that. Let's just move on. We'll figure it out and deal with it later because don't feel like bogging down the game for 30 minutes to an hour while we search up the correct ruling on something. So uh, we're going to grab a forest here. Ooh, and we got the stomping ground. Awesome. Um... So they're not doing a ton. I would like to get the Sakura and the Prismatic into play before we Chalice. Ideally, but at the same time, if we don't, they could just go off. Hmm. Borgamos is in the grave. Yeah. We're gonna do the line where they hopefully don't have anything to do as a result of it. That is a blood moon. When swept. We'll do our promise. That and a valor cut. Pass it over. I have to go on the old fashioned beat down plan. Good thing we've got a prime time to do that. this year uh, my friends and I just wrapped up um, a superhero westerns campaign and that was a lot of fun I am sure they want me to get another session of that going but I've only got like two weeks before a class starts up again so I probably won't be able to Three, possibly. World's fine, okay. We're a little bit slower now. Mm. They were able to get Gorios in. So we might be bringing back in the Woodfall Premise or bringing in the Rex Sage. On the plus side, they can't through the Breach us here. Unless they have a Simeon. Which, you know, very good chance is how they just drew an insane amount of cards. You're playing in a fantasy real world game and then DMing a high fantasy game heavily based on Theros. That is pretty sweet. Alright, they just placed on. Alright. We're dead here. 
We don't have to have them go through the motions. All right, I think we're gonna bring in the wood fall and uh, we'll cut a bolt and we'll cut a prismatic. Do we also want the Croson grip? No, I think this is enough. All right, this hand doesn't have enough going on. No green, so I'm gonna have to mull that. Uh, this hand's slow, but if we draw a single ramp spell. Pretty good. So we'll ship away the Cinder Glade, play the Cinder Glade, and pass it over. We have to draw a ramp spell and a land now. But... can't get a forest there to stop the blood moon so we're just gonna have to see if this is good enough with that blood moon that's fine we can still through the breach nope they're gonna through the breach Let's see if they win, because they should. We're getting blown out, folks. cards left no they've just got everything I'd laugh if the simians are looking for or in the last six cards nope And we're dead here. We live a tragic life, folks. Not a good night, folks. Not a good night. We're 0 2 already. Other league made us no money, and we're not in the profitable area already well not good profit like like one chest yeah i don't know enough about the lore um what makes uh what makes theros the best written uh plane since ennis in your opinion
Okay, let's see if we can uh, win a match. Okay, this hand's kind of odd. So we're gonna ramp here, and then we gotta through the bridge. If we can get a threat, we're gonna be in a pretty solid spot. Let's start off with the Valakut and pass it over. Hmm, the Boglin. 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 Alright, we're gonna shock ourselves, far seek, get a stomping ground, and we'll pass it over. Link's gonna be pretty good for them. Alright, we're gonna pass it over. There's Daybreak. This prismatic is pretty good. Still need a big threat. So we're not going to have enough to kill them with what we have right now. Our promise will do it. I believe so. Land. Go get two more Valakuts. Shoot them for everything. And then, oop, undo. Crack this and go get another one and shoot them for the rest. Yeah. <laughs> oh, that was good. Uh, we want to bring in Crossing Grip, Rex Sage. Uh, I want the Angers and I want the Chalices. Target removal is kind of bad. Oh, I'm good with taking out the Wood Elves. One Prismatic. And I think we're going to take out the One Hour and a Escape Chef. So it has great source material going off of the Mythos, okay? And an interesting plot line, Planeswalkers stealing Godhood, as well as a great betrayal, iconic character, loss of an iconic character, the Theros Gods, devotion mechanic really s sold the feel of God following. Um, there hasn't weren't written that many Bond Shell cards, and the plane felt great for you. Okay. And they tied it all together, plus you love all the Theros zombies. So then what do you think about the um, this upcoming set with this big war coming, and all the Planeswalkers coming to play? If we can get Chalice on one here quick, we're going to have a really, really good time. Yeah, I don't pay as much attention to the um, storyline as I really should, because I feel like I would enjoy the content much more if I did. Okay. And we'll just go wooded and pass it over.
get a cinder glade. That sweltering sun will be good. We're gonna shock. Hmm, do I want to shock? No, I don't. And we're just gonna go chalice on one here. And we'll pass it over. That should stop them a good bit, giving us time to go secure Tribe Elder, and then we'll wipe the board with Swaltering Sons. And we can either uh, Sweltering Suns here or Sakura, and I think we're just good to Sweltering Suns. Wipe the board, make ourselves feel better about life. That's game. Alright boys, got a win on the board, because we're not being so hot. <laughs> but, I don't know, I still like this deck quite a bit. We would have liked another ramp spell, but his hand's not bad. Search is perfect. So the next time we can go Sakura. And then we go land pass and then primeval titan unless we get a through the breach. Seems interesting to you, really shook up the most beloved landscape in the game. Um, you feel like nothing of value is lost. Gideon ended up saving Lily from the punishment for her betrayal. Domri died in the crossfire. Domi hardly had any substance as a character, and Niv offering himself to re uh, s offering himself to resurrect himself as the gu guild pack seems neat. And then you're sure Brolus is gonna live, and then Yeah, um so the uh, Gideon's not dying. For some reason, I, th I thought I was being told that he was going to die and get corrupted or something like that along those lines because of the Dark Blade. Or is that just uh, a little bit of corruption but nothing actually happens? So. They're gonna remand us. How rude. Good thing we're just gonna cast it anyway. He's gonna take on Lily's contract. It's kinda boring. <laughs> Yes, 
fetch up two Valakuts here, I think. No. We get a Valakut. Yeah, a Valakut and a red source. I mean, a green source. Uh, so, enlighten me, because I don't know as much about the lore. What is Lily's contract, exactly? Oh! <gasps> It's the Pestermite deck. Are we gonna die to a Simeon Spirit Guide here in the Kiki Jiki us? So we want as much interaction here as possible with the braids. I don't know why, but I suspect they're going to be... I think the Chalices will be strong here too, and possibly the Carnage Tyrant. I don't think we need anything else. I want instant speed removal, so I don't really care about the Sweltering Sun. Um, and I think we can beat them through a lot of things. So I'm going to cut the Scape Shift as well. The Wood Elves, one Prismatic Omen. But I think we're gonna cut one breach and one hour. I'll run it like this. Lillian sold her body to the to four demons in trade for immortality. She then hunted down the four demons, and after the fourth one was dead, Bolus revealed in the fine print that one of the demons was actually in service to him. So Lily has to now serve him as a result. And then he used her to wipe out Amika and raise the undead army. I mean, that seems cool. Is that was that like not really all that great the way it played out? I feel like the getcha with the um, the getcha on the oh you killed my demon so now you have to serve me is kind of lame. Yeah, if it's out of nowhere, then it's pretty boring. Let's see if a chalice on one will help us slow down their cantrips and their removal. Remand. So rude. Like, how has Liliana not been punished for all the crazy stuff she's done? And is Garrick still relevant? Because he, didn't he get all corrupted and started hunting down people?
So what makes uh, Gideon such a boring character to you? We're just passing here because we're going to hold up through the Breach for the end of their turn. Breach them, get in Titan, get the mana, hold up a Braid, and then we can cast the other Titan and do some fun stuff. well and I don't really want to tap out for this upgrade so I think we're just gonna pass it back I mean tap um, cast it I'd rather just pass it there turn it to do it through the bridge again that's kind of boring that they kind of like just made him disappear and didn't do anything with him I, I kind of enjoyed the fact that he was hunting down planeswalkers I thought that was dope and a good way to kill off some characters So we want to hold up the Abrade to take out their Deceiver, but we can. Six mana. We can Chalice for three. He's one-dimensional, one-sided character, messed up when he was young, all his friends died because of him, and spent all his time with his permanent indestructibility doing his best to white knight everything. Not ran off yet, still alive, just insane. I hope they have plans for him. Sounds good. See you soon when you come back.
see if we can take out this Jace. I'm just curious how they block. We're gonna upgrade this. So then we get to kill the deceiver and trample over. Pretty sweet. I have no interest in casting the Far Seeks or the Abrades right now. I'd rather just hold the mountains in our deck in case we can get rid of both buttons. Still got fetches to get. Looks like these are the last two fetches. We'll fetch up a couple of them just to thin out our deck. I'm gonna chalice on four here. Should stop any other Jaces and Cryptics, so. They're gonna remain this. Could tap out for it. Doesn't seem that worth it. We can also just chalice on two here, leaving them with just four and fives, but I think we're good to just pass and hold up a breed. Got that one. Now to just end this last one. I've always liked Elspeth as well, so that would be cool. I think I mainly liked Elspeth because I liked what she did as a planeswalker when she first came out. <laughs> This hand's pretty awkward. I don't think we can keep it. We've got so many big spells and we have no ramping at all, so let's mulligan down to six. This is much more reasonable. We got one ramp spell. We can ship the Woodfall Primus. Oh yeah, that'd be amazing to see a black white elsewhere just because you can uh, really get that. Like if it's got like a token creature going, like you're saying, that'd be pretty awesome, so. Or not what you're saying, but what I'm thinking is I would just want to do that, so. I 
Have they spoiled all the Planeswalkers or the entire set at this point? Oh, you want a legendary creature, okay. So far, I'm actually pretty excited about this set. There's going to be a lot of relevant Planeswalkers they've planted so far, and some pretty strong cards that I think could see, um, at the very least, into some sideboards. Um, so we'll see how they play out. Targeting us with the bolt. Gut shot. I think I want the Sakura Tribe Elders to return to my hand because I want to be able to cast it next turn and block the Awoken Horror. Yeah, I can see them doing it just because they want to change the way the it, it all plays out, so. We're gonna go secure again. We'll pass it over. See if we can block, get a mana, and see if that's enough to keep us in this game. Through the breach would be solid. Ooh. We can sweltering sun and bolt the thing in the ice. Yeah, it would be a pretty cool thing to see her just come back that way. Plus, we'd get a sweet legendary card, like you said. Oh, nope, we're dead. Okay. I don't want the Sweltering Sun. I do want the Surgicals and the Chalices. And I want the Rex Sage. And possibly this Crowson Grip as well. I find Bolt's kind of awkward, to be honest, in this matchup. Um, I'm good with cutting out the Scape Shift, the Wood Elves, and one Prismatic. So I had Dampening Spheres in here, and Dampening Sphere is another card that I bring in this matchup just to have that little... It's not great in this matchup, but it's enough to just slow them down and keep us in the game. And this is pretty sweet, so we'll keep this. If we can get an untapped land here, we'll be able to breach on turn three and do 18 to them. Or no, more. So, see if we can get that untapped land.
still got this turn to draw that untapped land. And if we do, we're solid. Okay, that's not quite what we we're looking for, but it's fine. We're going to cast this, get a forest, play the Valakut, and cast the Sakura. I feel like that's like straight out of a cliche book, and it would be pretty tragic. Well, I guess it's not that cliche. Because it's both of them not knowing who each other are instead of just one. I like Ajani so much. Okay, if they're not doing anything now, that's fine. We're not even going to sack the Sakura. Unless they have a spell pierce. One, two, three, four, five, six. Yeah, they could have a spell pierce, so then that would be awkward. So why don't we sack this? Get a mountain. Her turn. Through the breach. Sure. Okay, they're just conceding. Oh, the other card that I saw people running um, for a, a really strong main board hate was uh, Flame Slash over the Lightning Bolt. So instead of running it this version where I'm running three bolts and one sweltering, I could be on like a 2-2 two -two split of the Flame Slash and, and um, Angers. Um, and the, and the, and the, moving the Angers to the main would open up some slots in the side too, which would be cool, or we're able to pack it with a little bit more hate. Uh, I think this is good enough to keep. Is Jace not able to 1v1 Bolas? I thought he was supposed to be like the strongest or whatever. They made such a big deal out of him. This is fine. What we're going to do here is we're going to windswept. We're going to go get a forest. And we're going to chalice on one. Pass it. And then next turn, we'll plan on just ramping. And then we can cross and grip them. Bolus is mentally stronger than Jay, so he can't just mind wipe him. Okay, Chalice on 1 was good enough to make the opponent concede. <laughs> uh, no one's prepared. See, Chalice is so strong. <laughs> Alright, I'm actually going to call it there for the night. Um, I've been pretty work and school and all that stuff has uh, pretty much drained me. So this will be... Uh, a good night for me to just be able to relax. I'm going to take advantage of that after the stream. Uh, I will be back on Sunday uh, during about 6 o'clock. And we'll be streaming the rest of the night. 
And then uh, next week, we're actually going to change the schedule for that week until Tuesday because I do have to be at a work event on Wednesday, possibly. So we might be switching this till Tuesday. Um, I'll double check and I'll make sure to let you guys know on Monday, I mean on Sunday, whether that is the case or not. But I'll make sure to post that. So I uh, really appreciate everyone hanging out with me tonight and uh, checking out the stream. I'm happy we got a new follower. That's pretty sweet. Um, I'll be posting these videos on uh, my YouTube channel and Twitch in just a bit. Uh, if you guys have a deck you guys want to see play, let me know. Otherwise, I'll be planning on uh, just throwing up some other lists um, based off what I'm seeing. Um, I've been doing a lot of play testing because I want to get ready for this upcoming tournament and I'm kind of getting geeked up for um, I'm only three points away from getting to the Invitational so uh, I'm, I need probably to actually start getting into Standard so if you guys want to see some Standard or have some recommendations of what I should be playing for Standard to get ready for the format let me know I need to actually get used to it so thank you so much again everyone have a great night